Hello, this is video 64 and I'm going to be talking about choosing the pivot point and what I'm talking about is we're doing static equilibrium problems. We just talked about the two conditions necessary for static equilibrium that the net torque is zero and the net force is zero. So now we're going to see that when we're using the condition that the net torque must be zero that we can choose the pivot point wherever we want to so we really want to choose carefully to make the problem as easy as possible to solve. So when you're choosing a pivot point, when you have an object in static equilibrium, the net torque about every point must be zero. We just talked about that one of the conditions was the net torque must be zero. But it doesn't matter where you choose the pivot points, it must be zero about any point. So I have a picture of, let's say, a mountain climber here, and it shows her weight acting at the center of gravity downward here. The tension here, she's being pulled up by the cable. And then there's some kind of force here by the mount mountain wall here. So what we're saying here is that it doesn't matter where we pick the pivot point, the net torque must be zero because she's at rest. So if we pick the pivot point to be where the wall was, then that would be the pivot point. That means that this tension would produce a clockwise torque, and this weight would produce a counterclockwise torque. And again, the way that you know the direction of the torque is you fix this point. You just put your thumb on it, and then just pull upward here and see which way she rotates, and you'll see that she'll rotate clockwise. So those the torques must balance, the torque due to the tension and due to the weights. So if you pick your pivot point somewhere else, such as at the center of gravity, the torques still must balance. So in this case, you can see that if you fix this point and you pull in this direction, it's going to cause a clockwise torque. But if you pull in this direction to the left where this F is here, that's going to pull upward. It's going to cause a counterclockwise torque. So once again, those two torques must balance. So how do you know where to pick your pivot point if you can pick it anywhere? So my idea here is that you're going to choose the pivot point to simplify the solution and you're going to pick it where there are the most unknown forces or where there is a force not relevant to the question. So the reason that you want to pick it at this location is because the torque is zero if the force is acting at or through the pivot points. Okay, so what does that mean? So what this means is, let's look back at this picture. Let's say we look at the force due to the wall here. And let's say that we just have no idea what the magnitude of this force is. Well, if we pick the pivot point to be right there where that force is, then this force is at a location r equals zero from the pivot points, so it does not produce any torque. Remember the definition of torque? You've got to have some kind of distance, r, from that force. If the force is at the pivot point, does not produce any torque, so by picking the pivot point there, that means that this force is going to come out of our equation because the torque exerted by this force is zero. So when you sum up the torques equal to zero and you have a torque due to W and a torque due to tension, and I'm not paying attention to the sign of the torque right now, I'm just summing up the torques, a torque due to this force F, you sum them up equal to zero. Of course, you have to pay attention to the sign, but the point is that if this torque is zero, because the force is at the pivot point, then it cancels out of the equation and the F does not show up in the equation anymore. So you can see how this makes your problem easier. So if, if you had several forces there, then you definitely want to pick the pivot point there because if you don't know anything about those forces, they will cancel out of the equation.
Now, in other times, you may have to pick that pivot point where there's a force not relevant to the question. So it could be possible that even though you don't know much about this force F here, it could be possible that the problem tells you or the problem asks you nothing about tension and you just don't care about it. It asks, let's say that the problem wants you to solve this force F. Well, then you can't pick the pivot point there because the force will cancel out of the equation. So if you don't care about T, then you could pick the pivot point at T. That way T cancels out of the equation and then you can have F left in the equation in order to be able to solve for it. So let's look at one application of this and we'll definitely do a lot more numerical problems in the videos that follow. We're just trying to get the concepts down so that when you do the problems that you're not just plugging numbers in the equation without understanding what you're doing. You always want to understand what you're doing. So let's take a look. The same picture again. This time it says, what is the direction of the y component of the force exerted on the bar by the wall? So we already established that the wall is going to push to the right on the bar, but it could push upward or downward. And we really don't know because if we look at the condition of the sum of the forces equals zero, we know the y forces must balance. Well, we know that the tension has a force going up. The weight has a force going down on this bar here. But we don't know if the tension is greater than the weight or vice versa. So we don't know if we need an extra component upward or if we need an extra component downward in order for the y forces to balance. So looking at this condition really doesn't tell us which way that, that y force is going to be. But if we look at the fact that the sum of the torques equals zero and that we can pick the pivot point wherever we want, that was the whole topic of this video, we want to pick it wherever we want in order to be able to solve for what we're looking for. We're looking for a force over here. We know that this weight acts downward. Why don't we pick the pivot point right here where this tension is? Just see what happens. When you pick the pivot point here, and you notice I always like to label my pivot point with a big dot, then we know that the weight here of the sign acting on the bar exerts a torque that is counterclockwise. Well, this says that the torques must balance. So if there's a counterclockwise torque, there must be a clockwise torque to balance it. The tension force does not produce any torque at the pivot point. So that means that whatever force is here due to the wall must exert a clockwise torque in order to balance the counterclockwise. So that means that force must be upward in order to cause the object to rotate clockwise. So the answer to our question is that the y component of the force by the wall on the bar is going to be up. So just to recap this very important video that's going to help us solve all of the problems that follow. When you're picking the pivot point, pick it at the location where you have either the most unknown forces or any force that you just don't care about at the moment. Because wherever you pick the pivot point, any force there will exert no torque. The torque will be zero.